Hello everyone, welcome back on the series on DSP processor. In this lecture, we are going to introduce you on analog to digital converter and how can we program the analog to digital converter. So before going further, if you haven't subscribed my channel, please go and subscribe the channel. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so, in this lecture, we will see the analog to digital converter using the Code Compose Studio, and we will convert the uh, more number of channels uh, into the digital domain, digital data. Whatever analog informations we have, we are converting uh, the analog channels into the digital data, corresponding digital data. So, uh, there is a uh, lot of uh, information available. Like, how can we do? Like, with the MATLAB, we can direct the interface. Uh, but the issue with this, if some efforts is happening in the MATLAB or something, something happens, it is very difficult to debug the code. So once you know the code, it will be easy for you to debug the code in the, for using the MATLAB also. So first, uh, you just understand the code and you can apply this information using the MATLAB. So what kind of registers we need and uh, how many channels we are going to convert? What should the sampling rate? These are the many questions asked. Uh, uh, generally asked by uh, by yourself and how can we proceed further uh, for the analog to digital converter okay so all these aspects we are going to cover in this lecture so stay tuned with this lecture so uh, till now what we have covered we have covered the gpi we have covered the epwm and uh, interrupts okay obviously that is required for uh, the uh, dsp processor so uh, we'll start uh, without wasting our time. Uh, so we are going to use the ADC, right? So the ADC, we have to define the uh, setup for the ADC, some registers and some ISR for the ADC. And how can we start the conversion for the ADC? All things we have to decide. Okay, so first thing, we have to decide the ADC setup and we have to initializing the ADC and we have decided the isr interrupt service request interrupt service routine for the adc okay and some variables to store uh, the results into for the adc conversion okay so these things we have uh, always we have to remind in mind and by reminding this uh, information with this knowledge this information we just start the video so uh, all things uh, as you can see we have already covered in the last what is the GPIO, what is the EPWM, what is the PI vector table, what is the PI control registers. So now, after the PI vector table, what we are going to use, we are going to use the initialization of the ADC. So in, in, in the initialization of the ADC, it will set up the basic setup for the ADC. It will set up for the initial calibration for the ADC. Now, uh, in the ADC setup, we are just initializing some set of registers uh, like uh, what should be the uh, frequency of the ADC, what should be the whether we have to power up the ADC or not and how we can use like we have to use in the simultaneous sampling mode or in the sequential sampling or simultaneous sequential sampling mode. So depending upon our requirement how we are going to use the ADC. Okay, so this will allow you to use the ADC setup and uh, this ADC initialization will allow you to use the basic ADC setup that is the clock for the ADC and all our initial calibrations okay so for this we need to initialize the prototype so we just go to the top of our project and we just see the prototype for the adc so you can see initialization of the adc this is the prototype for the adc initializations and uh, this is the prototype for the adc setup okay so these two prototypes we have to use uh, for our projects and to store the results variables uh, results registers into some kind of variable we need so we are just initializing the voltage uh, underscore vr1 to vr4 and all we are taking unsigned integer okay so now we will go to the uh, um, okay other than that we have to generate the interrupt okay so interrupt are the you as you know that interrupt are the protected set of registers and they will lie inside the core of the processor so we have to allow you uh, before using and we have to disabling the path after using this. So for the ADC uh, interrupt, we have to go to the ADC interrupt and uh, that is address will be the ADC ISR interrupt service request. Okay. And these are the ADC CPU timers. 
basic setup for the CPU time is 0, 1, and 2. Oh, okay. And uh, other than that, we have to go to the pi vector tables. And the pi vector table, you can go. That's what is the 6 and what is the 6 and what is the 7. Okay. And this is the pi IER that is equals to 1. So this will allow you to use your uh, access, uh, your ADC interrupt uh, with the help of pi vector tables. Okay. So now, what we'll do, what we will do, we just directly go to the ADC set a ADC setup and we'll just see how the different set of registers will be used. So the first set of registers you can see here, these are the ADC control set of registers. Okay. So you can see here, these are the ADC CTR, CTRL control set of registers one. And this bit, first bit is the suspension mode. So this bit will allow you to use the inter. This bit is generally the interaction between your CPU, CPU that is your PC, computer, personal computer, and your processor. So it, if you are keeping this bit as zero, that means you are not going to you are not going to generate any interrupt. So there will be continuous uh, information is sharing between your computer and your processor. So this bit is we are going to use at zero. Okay, and. Uh, Next one is acquisition prescaler. This will define you how you are going to use uh, your window size of your ADC. So this bit we are keeping is as one, and you can change uh, by uh, uh, changing your data sheet. Just read the data sheet, and you can change the acquisition prescaler bits. And your CPS bit will allow you to define, like divide your input frequency to the desired number so you can keep it as zero and you can keep it as one zero means you are not going to divide your input frequency and one means you are going to divide the input frequency by two so for example you have a 25 uh, megahertz of input frequency right so if you are keeping it one that you are getting the output of this uh, output will be you are getting 12.5 megahertz okay and if you are keeping this bit as zero that you are getting the exit is 30 mega 25 megahertz uh, as a clock frequency and here uh, the continuous run continuous run will allow you to use your ADC in the continuous mode and uh, whether you want to use the ADC in the continuous mode and you want to wait you want to wait the interrupt you want to wait the trigger uh, okay uh, so what we are going to do we are just using the continuous we don't want to wait a trigger uh, for the next start of the conversion we just want to use the continuous way Okay, and next one is the sequence cascade and uh, okay, so this bit will allow you to use the ADC in the cascaded mode and the dual sequential mode. So uh, if you are using the dual sequential mode means your two ADC, the two conversions will be happening at the same time and the cascaded mode, initially the first conversion happened after the end of the conversion, the first conversion, the next conversion is happening. But in the dual sequential mode, two conversions are happening at the same time. Okay, so these things you must remember in your mind. And the next one is these are the interrupt mode sequence. So the interrupt mode sequence will allow you the interrupt at every end of the sequence and every next end of the sequence. Okay. So and interrupt enable sequence will enable your interrupt. Whether you if you want to use the interrupt, it will enable this. Okay. For this is for the sequence one. Okay. So and the next one is because we are using the. Uh, uh, cascaded okay we are uh, okay we are using the cascaded uh, so all will be after some time like uh, one after another one so here only the sequence one will be there so if you are using dual sequential mode it, we have to define the sequence one as well as the sequence two some registers we have to define with the sequence one as well as for the sequence two so here we are here we are using in the cascaded mode so we just initializing the uh, interrupt and we are just selecting the mode of the interrupt at which time we have to generate the interrupt the next reset sequence one reset sequence one will be reset uh, immediately and uh, reset sequence one uh, and uh, okay it will reset the sequence at the immediately okay so and uh, you have to wait for the another uh, sequence to trigger okay so it will uh, trigger it will reset your uh, sequence one immediately if you are keeping this pattern zero that is uh, that you don't want any actions on that so every time we have to reset immediately uh, for the to the reset from the sequence one and uh, this uh, ADC uh, like different way of operating like uh, you can start your conversion with the help of software start and you can start your conversion ADC start the conversion with the help of your EPWM modules so here we are enabling the EPWM module 
to start our ADC, analog to digital converter, and to start its conversion. So we are enabling the AWM as a start of the conversion for the sequence one. Okay. So these are the uh, control set of registers two. Now in the control set of registers three, uh, one set of register like ADC clock three scalar that is equals to we have kept three because uh, we got the uh, high speed clock scale clock three scalar is one fifty megahertz. So this clock is very high for the ADC to drive. So no, so if this clock frequencies we are using to use, there will be a lot of quantizations error will happening in the ADC. So the minimum sampling uh, rate for the ADC will be 12.5 uh, megahertz and less than that. So we, what we are going to do uh, that uh, the processor has a features like we can divide your clock frequency further. So using the ADC clock free scalar bit and the CPS bit, we are uh, getting the 12.5 uh, megahertz as, uh, as a clock frequency that drive the analog to digital converter. And 12.5 megahertz is a very huge frequency, very faster sampling rate. So uh as you can know already uh, okay so this 12.5 megahertz is the maximum sampling rate uh, uh that is that can be used for the adc to drive uh, and adc to start the conversion and these reference selections uh, we are keeping at zero because we are not giving any reference uh, voltage uh, for our signals okay so uh, the next is uh like adc band get reference and down power down so what it will do this registers will be used to uh, powering up uh, your ad analog to digital converter so when we are going to start the adc we have to powering up your analog to digital converter right now for that purpose we are keeping this bit as uh, this bit as one this bit is one one that is zero x three so if you are keeping this as one one and that is uh, decimal equivalent to three so you can directly write as a three also and so you are powering up your analog digital converter and here you can see there is this uh, s mode selections so what is the meaning of s mode so which kind of mode we want to select like we want to go to for the simultaneous sampling and we can go for the sequential sampling so this is sampling mode selections so simultaneous sampling if you are going so we are converting two channels at the same time and if you are going for the sequential sampling we are converting the channel one channel after conversion of the one channel the next channel will come and the next channel will come so like this we are going to convert okay so now how many channels we want to convert okay until now you have powered up your adc you have defined the interrupt all things you have defined but you haven't defined the how many channels we want to convert so the maximum this bit will allow you to ADC maximum conversion bit will allow you to use the number of channels you, you want to convert that is equals to three three means the maximum number of channels minus one the maximum conversion will be the maximum number of channels minus one so here if you want to uh, convert your four channels uh, whatever four in analog input channels into the digital data so you have to keep four minus one that is equals to three and uh, now we have selected four channels which four channels you have to select right so uh, this conversion zero zero that means you are uh, this bit you are keeping is zero that means adc a zero channels we are going to convert and if you are keeping it as conversion zero one equals to one that means you are converting adc a uh, one if you are keep keeping this bit as three that means you are going to convert the a0, A1, A2, and A3. 1, 2, 3. Ah, so here you are going to convert the analog A, 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 ADC A3. If you are keeping as 4, that means you are going to convert ADC A4. Okay. So like this, we are going to convert the number of channels. Okay. So if you are keeping it as 8, that means you are going to convert the ADC uh, IN B0 number of the channels. Okay. So hope you understood this. Uh, so how we, how we are going to select your channels? Okay, and now, uh, okay, so till now you have what you have done, you have powered up your ADC, you have generated your interrupts, you have selected your channels, you have selected your sampling mode, and uh, okay, and uh, you have selected the maximum number of conversions. Okay, all things you have converted, but you don't know if at what sampling rate and uh, you are uh, starting your conversion, that what sampling your conversion should start.
because that is your ADC sampling rate is a 12.5 megahertz right so it is very fast sampling rate so for this purpose what we are going to do we are starting we are converting our number of samples at 50 kilohertz okay so okay sorry 500 kilohertz we are uh, uh, converting so 50 kilohertz we are going to convert so regarding 50 kilohertz uh, we have to use the epwm module so uh, using up down counting mode on some event trigger modules so what are the event trigger modules if using uh, when we are going for the up and down counting mode so we will see so uh, when your counter is in up down counting mode and at both position we want to generate the trigger so at when tvp add will be zero and where tvp add will be at a maximum value when your counter will be at zero and when counter will be at tvp add value so during that time we can generate a trigger so here also we can generate the trigger and here also we can generate the trigger so there's two positions there we can generate the trigger okay so these three positions we can say like our event should be triggered so by uh, uh, so these two event trigger uh, ps and event trigger uh, selections will allow you to use at what positions we want to uh, generate a trigger to drive the adc and that is 5 kilo 50 kilohertz so the 50 kilohertz tbprd will be 2999 and these are the uh, clock divisions and high speed clock divisions modules so with that help we have getting the particular frequency to get the tbprd value of 2999 so now we have defined the we, we, we have started the adc so after conversion the adc uh, the where should the conversion data should uh, should stored so the conversion data should be stored in the corresponding result registers. So here we are converting the conversion zero. So here corresponding result registers will be ADC, a result register zero, and conversion one will be result register one. So we just go to the ADC ISR at uh, every uh, sampling, every uh, event trigger, every when every event trigger it will go to the ADC ISR, and ADC ISR it will uh, take the results ADC. Uh, Result register ADC mirror register 0 and that will be stored in the voltage VR. ADC result register 1 that will be stored in the voltage VR2. ADC 3 that is stored in the VR3. Okay, so these are the corresponding result registers where we are going to store the registers. Now, the thing is we have a ADC is 12 bit, right? So, 12 bit, so number of conversion all bits will be like 1 over 2 key power 12. So, it will be 1 over 40. Okay, so 2 key power 12 equals to 4096. Okay, so suppose you are giving the three words as inputs, so it will convert all the bits into the one, 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 one. Uh, all all bits will be one, but we again we want to convert that one bit into corresponding uh, three words. Okay, or we want to convert the corresponding one words. So what we are going to do? We are just multiplying uh, the numbers is with the help of one zero uh, one divided by one zero uh, nine six. So we are getting the actual number. Uh, so suppose we are giving the one volt so we are getting the one volts uh, at the input and this value you can use for the further uh, uh, further computation in your project okay so so for all the uh, inputs we are just multiplying with the gain value to achieve the desired to achieve the same value uh, whatever we have given the outside of the controller uh, with the help of sensors and uh, whatever sensors which you have connected with your processor okay so after conversion all uh, we are going to reset your sequence one and we are clearing all the interrupt lines and we are acknowledging uh, your pi group uh, uh, in pi interrupt table okay so now next thing is uh, how can we um, if we if if you want to use the uh, epwm okay and if you want to go for the uh, tvprd or something so here we, we are generating uh, the Okay, so now whether you want to yeah, whether you yeah, now you want to check whether this result is correct or not. So now what we'll do, we just uh, check with the deck deck IC. So we have a deck IC on uh, the processor. So with the help, the help of deck IC, we are just uh, writing this code. So this code we will I'll tell you later. Uh, just we are just going to use the this code. So we have using D E B and okay. So we are using D channel, E channel or B channel uh, to uh, use the whatever analog signals we are getting the same analog signal we are uh, seeing with a uh, 
with the help of take IC. So we will we can verify whether our inputs is correct or not. Okay. So uh, with the help of this take IC, we are just getting uh, the uh, same whatever same inputs we are giving the same output we are getting outside of the take IC. So we can verify yeah our inputs is correct and ADC is uh, working fine uh, at each and every time. Okay. So now we will see in the real time the segments and uh, we'll come back to the project soon. is uh, we have given the sine wave and the frequency is 30 hertz okay as you can see here and uh, uh, you can see so if you are changing the frequency you can see the frequency of the sine wave is also going to change okay and uh, and if you are reducing the frequency at 10 hertz so you can see the and now we will what we'll do we'll just change the signals from the triangular a uh, from a uh, sine to a square and uh, the frequency of the square we will see and uh, we will see the frequency okay so now we will see what we'll do we'll just change the period and uh, okay and we will see the pulse okay so we are getting both the pulse the same and uh, we will see the pulse um, duty and we will change the duty of the pulse width as you can see if you are changing the pulse duty uh, the ADC output is also going to change so how we have taken uh, we have I have taken the signals from the function generator and uh, the function generator output is going going giving to the uh, ADC a uh, ADC a0 as you can see here so this is the ADC a0 pins and uh, I'm taking the output so this is the D take IC and I'm taking the output from the take IC and as you can see this is the output part of the take IC and this is the ground and I have connected uh, this uh, I have connected this with the, the uh, this is the inputs and this this day this take IC I have connected and I have connected with the DSO so you can see if you are changing the uh, triangular we are getting the triangular and uh, okay so it is converting the channels so this is the one of the channels now i'll change i'll just stop it and uh, i'll just change the channels and uh, from a0 to a1 and uh, i'll change the output of the pins so from this one to this one and i'll just turning on so as you can see uh, we are getting the same output and uh, we just change the ramp and we just change the pulse and both you can see okay if you are taking the noise signals we are getting the noisy also okay so all signals we are getting so this way uh, uh, we can see the uh, analog to digital converter and it's working perfectly for all the channels So the output we can see and and the expression window of the CCS as you can see here the ADC is zero and the output and correspond digital outputs and uh, as you can see here and we can see from the code that uh, we have uh, the all the channels we have connected the inputs to the ADC A0 so we can visualize here so now we'll see uh, the B and we will go to the code composite studio what is the b and uh, we will see so the b is the, the uh, final output and that is corresponding to the inputs that is also varying as the input is varying as you can see on the expression window of this code composite studio If you haven't subscribed my channel, please go and subscribe the channel and share this video so it can reach to more people.